Okay. Uh, thank you for your kind uh, introduction. Again, I'm Shintaro Sakaguchi from the department where no aeronautics and astronautics the University of Tokyo in Japan. Our work is control of disintegration of reinforced concrete rocks utilizing the newly developed uh, electrical methods based on wave and fracture dynamics. And this work is, has been done with Sumito Mitsui Construction Company. And first, here are the activities of our work. The newly developed electrical method to destruct structures may be dynamically more controllable than conventional blasting methods, but the physical process uh, and the mechanisms of dynamic fracture in solid materials generated by impressive electrical discharge have not been clarified yet. Here, as a first step toward further understanding of fracture by impressive electrical discharge, we performed experimental and numerical investigations. Especially, we focused on the uh, geometrical and loading conditions on the dynamic destruction of given model structures. Uh, first, uh, recently, uh, <coughs> Electrical flushing system called EDIX has been uh, developed by Hitachi Dosen Corporation. How it works is the electrical energy stored in a capacitor, uh, capacitor is discharged in a cartridge with a self reactive liquid within several hundreds of microseconds through an electric switch, and high pressure is generated due to the rapid evaporation of the liquid inside this cartridge. Util utilizing the EDIX system, uh, we first conducted a simple experiment with cylindrical specimens with, uh, without reinforcing steel bars. Uh, <coughs> 500 meter diameter, 500 meter height, and we drilled a hole and set the cartridge at the center of the specimen and stemmed it. And, <coughs> and uh, the specimen was fragmented and uh, we recorded the process uh, using high-speed video camera system and home video camera system. Next, the movie. Uh, oh, how? Movie. Okay. Oh, this movie. Movie. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The movie doesn't oh. move. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, oh, okay, okay. The, uh, these are snapshots of the movie, and uh, yes, these are snapshots of the movie, and uh, like this. <laughs> ah, oh, this uh, this is connected to cartridge, and this cable is uh, connected to a home sub home power supply system, and high current is uh, okay, <laughs> and. What? Oh, yeah. okay. And uh, what's important is apparently from the home video camera system, all cracks generate and propagate from the center to outbound. Out, uh, outbound. However, when we observed the photos taken with high-speed camera system at frame rates of 50,000 frames per second, uh, we can see. There are not only outbound crack, not, uh, but also inbound crack. So crack generate and propagate from the outer boundary to uh, at the center section, right? And we believe that uh, this is due to wave reflection. And <clears throat> even in such a simple situation, uh, three-dimensional crack and wave propagation process is rather complex. Following the, these previous uh, experiments, we conducted rather Africa, uh, we tested more Africa situations, so rectangular specimens with reinforcing steel bars. And <clears throat> this time, 500 meter width and length, uh, 500 meter width and length, and 250 meter height. And we, in addition to blast hole, uh, color, light blue and red, uh, we drilled, uh, we added uh, empty dummy holes uh, colored dark blue in order to uh, control or guide the main crack. 
And the other section, colored green or yellow or brown, are all represent uh, high reinforcing steel bars. And the uh, result is it. As uh, shown in the left is a uh, top view of the specimen after fragmentation. And we can see that uh, the main deep crack connecting two blast holes, uh, there, there is this main crack, and towards the left and right side, a uh, specimen was fragmented and reinforcing steel bars emerged. That is important for real destruction uh, engineering. <coughs> and shown in the right is the process of upper, side, upper surface of the specimen. Uh, in this experiment, we also find, found uh, inbound crack. And next, in the following, uh, I'll compare these three patterns in order to check the sensi sensitivity of the position, positions of the, these uh, empty dummy holes. <coughs> and, dummy holes. And the middle one is uh, uh, we, the specimen we already, already uh, observed. So this specimen is the middle one. And, uh, and the rest one has the similar geometrical settings, but this time, uh, but now, this uh, empty dummy holes are set outside the reinforcing steel bars. And the right one has no dummy hole. And I will, I will compare these three specimens. The result is it. it. And uh, when we compare the left one and the middle one, uh, the main crack connecting these two blast holes uh, in the rest of the specimen, this crack uh, is rather thinner or shallower, uh, relatively shallower, so compared to the middle one. And uh, when we observe the right specimen, uh, only a very thin crack uh, can be found in the central section, and the central section is not fragmented at all, and the rest one is um, relatively not fragmented effectively. So we can find uh, these two, uh, these empty dummy holes have the effect to uh, guide this guide this crack or fragment the central section effectively, and the positions of the empty dummy holes to blast holes and um, uh, reinforcing steel bars have impact to that effect. We can uh, observe that from the field experiment. And in order to see the mechanisms of this uh, result, we used our three-dimensional finite difference code. And assumptions are here, but uh, details can be found in our paper, so I'll skip them. And, ah, yes, and I incru we included the fracture criteria. For generation and enlargement of three-dimensional fracture, fracture criteria are still unclear. But here, a simple fracture criterion, a volumetric strain, strain criterion is included in our calculations. The maximum al allowable uh, volumetric strain of concrete and steel is set at 6.6 .6 times 10 to minus horsepower for the initial speculations. If the volumetric strain at the grid point exceeds that value, that grid point is regarded as fractured and excluded from the calculation of the world. And, the, and these are the result, simulation results of with, with and without empty dummy holes for field experiments. And, uh, and the show in the slide, this picture and this picture shown, is the distribution of the volumetric strain and uh, <coughs> volumetric strain. And uh, in order to See the wave propagation. First, this simulation does not include the fracture criterion. First, and we can find the comp uh, and af after 20 microseconds simultaneous application of ADX, we can find the complex region, a compressive region around the blast holes uh, due to the application. And six microsecond, 60, 60 microseconds after. Uh, that uh, due to the wave reflection, we can find the tensile region in terms of dilatation or 
polymetric string in near the free surface. And 100, mi 100 microseconds after the application, uh, due to the interaction of with empty dummy holes, uh, in the left specimen, the, we can find the larger uh, tensile region uh, compared to the right one. And we can and we can expect that in the rest of the specimen uh, more serious or deeper crack can be expected. And indeed, when we include the uh, previously mentioned fracture criterion, uh, we can find uh, more fractured zone in the left specimen uh, indicated dark color uh, near near the central section compared to the right one. And uh, these, uh, uh, these results is, is very, uh, in good agreement with field experiment, we think. So based on the, this experimental and numerical uh, analysis, there are conclusions of, of our work. Dynamic fracture patterns generated by edX in the field experiments may be reproduced by the developed three-dimensional wave simulator for a personal computer. Here, instead of employing alternately charged holes, more complex geometry for the positions of brass and dummy holes have been prepared. Dummy holes are not placed to the, on the expected main crack path, and they are set rather to direct the main crack to connect the brass holes only. Note that our current method is aimed for more uh, aimed more for critical situations to construct and destruct structures made of geomaterials in urban areas, which requires a very careful approach, and uh, complex three-dimensional treatment is, is acceptable in actual fracture operation. We believe this is quite a new topic also in the field of fracture mechanics, and also it is important for us to know whether the knowledge accumulated through our experiments with blasting by detonating explosives is it still valid for the modern safer technology or not? And through this study, it has been recognized that geometrical settings may play an important role in controlling fracture extension, and this characteristic may be utilized to realize more efficient and controlled disintegration of a given structure. For more controllable structural fracture and demolition, the same uh, simulation technique possibly with a more defined fracture criteria may be used to design optimal positions of blast and dummy holes in the structure. That's all about my presentation. Thank you. Thank you.